Greetings family, this is Leah Simon, the Naturally You Coach, best-selling author, speaker, nutritionist, life coach, live blood analyst, on a mission to help 100,000 black women to eat for health, think for happiness, live in harmony, or what I call becoming naturally you. And today I'm going to be talking about how to boost your immunity naturally. So before I get started, as always, I'd encourage you to head over to my website, thenaturallyyoucoach.com and join the mailing list so that you can be the first to find out about um, when I'm going live and um, artic other articles that I have on the blog. Um, I have a podcast, so you'll find out when new podcast episodes come out, um, videos, recipes, all those wonderful things, as well as special offers and information on events, coaching programs, um, online programs and courses, and some other fun stuff that's happening. And as an easy subscriber, you would get um, special discounts on things that are coming out, and you'll get to find out about them first. Um, so immunity is obviously a hot topic at the moment. It's something that a lot of people are asking about and asking to find out a bit more about um, because of the COVID-19 situation. So people are uh, people do want to protect themselves and minimize their risk as much as possible, which is obviously very understandable. Um, and people are doing this with, um, you know, things like protective clothing. Obviously, there's, you know, more people are wearing um, face masks and <clears throat> using hand sanitizers where they can get them or making their own hand sanitizer and if you need a recipe to make your own hand sanitizer or an alcohol gel type um, hand cleaning thing um, you can go to my Facebook page or my Instagram page and then there's a recipe of how you can make your own with about three to four ingredients it's not very difficult at all um, but people are also so as well as um, helping to protect, you know, personal protective equipment, they call it. As well as people wanting to have enough of those, people are also, thankfully, um, also wanting to make sure that their internal defences are up to par as well, so that if they do um, come in contact with the COVID-19, um, they are in a better position to be able to um, fight it off. So... Um, as, and I think most people have just realised that underlying health conditions are one of the contributing factors that people are talking about contributing to it being more challenging if you do um, get COVID-19. So people are just generally wanting to stay as fit, as, healthy as, and uh, fit and healthy as possible and boosting their immunity as much as possible just so that they don't put themselves at risk. And I think also just generally, even aside from COVID-19 or whether you're going to contract COVID-19 specifically or not, I think a lot of people are just more, um, appreciate their health a lot more right now, maybe than previously. Um, just how, you know, fragile things can become and how uncertain things can become when your health is challenged and your health is in jeopardy. And obviously, again, people have more time on their hands right now because of um, possibly being on lockdown or in quarantine. So now is also an opportunity for a lot of people to kind of go inwards and work out, okay, what do I want to achieve during this time? And some people focusing on their health is one thing that some people do want to achieve at this time. So um, throughout this this um, video, I'm going to be referring to pathogens. So pathogen is any living organism that can make you unwell. So when I'm talking about pathogens, that would include viruses, bacteria, um, parasites, worms, protozoa, those types of things. So I'm going to use like the blanket term pathogens. Um, so I'm not always going to be talking, talking about COVID-19 because this video and the information in it is going to be relevant moving when we've overcome this situation. Um, so when I'm talking about pathogens, I'm talking about the range of them. And so I am going to be speaking about the immune system, but to lit literally to explain in detail the functionings of the immune system would take uh, another video, <laughs> another, another length of time. What I'm not going to be specifically focusing on now is just giving you a brief understanding of what the immune system is and how it works, what it means when people talk about boosting the immune system, because it is a bit of a blanket term, boost your immune system, but what is actually happening when you boost your immune system? What is it that you're actually doing when you're boosting your immune system? And why is it that certain things, foods, practices are recommended in that process? So, um, so increasing your immunity or boosting your immunity involves four basic steps. The first one is increasing your defenses, which is after. So your immune system is made up of several different parts, but mostly 
um, we're talking about increasing your white blood cell level. That's mainly what people are talking about when they're talking about taking foods to boost your immunity. Um, vitamin C and zinc are two of the main nutrients that are involved in the process of synthesizing um, vitamin C, um, white blood cells and um, yeah, vitamin C and zinc are mainly the, the two main ones that are involved in that and the white blood cells are um, the main part, the main kind of um, things in your body that will attack foreign or dangerous things that enter into your bloodstream. So obviously you have, like one of your parts of your immune system is your skin. It's protecting you from the dangers of the outside world, but those dangers obviously can get through your mouth, your nose, your ears, your eyes, those types of cuts in your skin, those types of things. So um, we want to increase your defenses, mainly boosting your um, white blood cell count, making sure you've got enough friendly bacteria, those types of things. The next thing we want to do is to re reduce your exposure to pathogens in the first place so that your immune system doesn't have as much to deal with. The next thing you want to do is avoid things that can suppress your immune function or feed the pathogens. The pathogens are again those um, so there's main five pathogens that can uh, living organisms that can create disease in your body. So you want to um, avoid things that suppress your immune function, reduce your number of white blood cells, reduce your body's ability to fight off diseases and um, reduce anything or avoid things that will feed the pathogens that are there. Um, and then the last thing is to completely suppress the pathogens that are there as well. So you want to stop feeding them and then you want to suppress them or kill them, some people would say. Um, so those are the four basic steps. So we're going to talk a little bit more about those four basic steps. Now, when it comes to immunity, also bear in mind before we continue that some people just have everyone's level of um, everyone's ability to protect themselves against outside forces is different. Some people have brilliant immunity. Um, you could put them in a vat of pathogens and they would come out like, oh, I'm fine. Other people, you can sneeze on one side of the road, they're on the other side of the road and they end up with pneumonia. Everyone has got different sensitivities. Some people are like canaries in a coal mine. Some people are very delicate. Some people are a lot stronger. So um, some people, ha if you have a high... Uh, if you have a well-functioning immune system um, and you have a generally strong constitution, um, that can make you more resilient to um, infection. But again, everyone has their limits. So some people are like, oh, I never get cold, I never get sick. It, again, that could be because you have a, a high-functioning immune system, but sometimes there is the, also the fact that some people's immunity or immune function, immune system, is... Um, their, their body is in a weakened state and it means that their immune system isn't actually doing what it's meant to do as efficiently as it should. So, yeah, some people don't get a cold all year because they actually do have quite a good functioning immune system and their immune system deals with these things before they manifest into illnesses. But then you also have people who are who are holding on to a lot of toxins because their immune system isn't functioning optimally and it's not processing out a lot of the toxins that are within them. And then you have that very real phenomenon of people who um, are go, 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 you know, they're working constantly and they've got lots of extra um, activities that they do around their work and they've got a family and they go, 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 go. And the one moment they slow down, like when they go on holiday or something and they finally get a chance to sit down and relax, they get sick. And then they're sick for the whole two week holiday that they're on and then they come back and they got to go straight back to the grind again. So having an immune system that produces things like a cough or a cold or a flu or, you know, a 24 hour thing, those things are signs that your immune system is functioning and working. But again, just because you don't have a cough and a cold a couple of times a year, it doesn't mean that your immune system is not working. We are so individual um, that things are going to manifest in lots of different ways. So um, but everyone has their limits. Even someone who does have a um, strong immune system and a strong constitution, even they will have their limits as to how much their immune system will tolerate before it will um, manifest a, a, a disease or illness. And then also your immune, the strength of your immune system can also be determined by when you do get sick, how long are you sick for? How long are you experiencing the symptoms for? Does your body get over it quickly or are you plagued with it for a long time? And then does, do you end up with secondary infections and secondary um, conditions? And, you know, do you just end up in a, a bit of a cycle? All of those things 
um, are something to be taken into consideration. But no matter where you are on that spectrum of strength of immunity, the recommendations that I'm going to give now are going to be beneficial for everyone, whether you feel you have a strong immunity or whether you have a really delicate or weak immunity, all the recommendations are going to be useful and beneficial to you. So the first thing, again, so it's increasing your defenses, reducing your exposure, avoiding things that suppress your immune system and feed the pathogens, and then actually taking action to get rid of those pathogens, suppress those pathogens in your body so that they don't um, cause problems. Greeting Afra, thank you for joining me sis. And thank you everyone else who has been joining this live as well, I appreciate you all. Um, whether you're watching live or via the replay in fact. So the first thing that, I'm, so I'm, I'm gonna go into each of them in a little bit more detail. And again, this is an overview of the situation as opposed to um, great detail, but there's, I'm still gonna be giving you enough information for you to actually take some practical steps with. So the first thing is increasing your defenses. So again, the main defense that I'm gonna focus on you increasing at the moment is um, helping your body to have an optimal production of white blood cells so that when pathogens do get into your bloodstream, your body does have enough defenses to be able to fight them off. So the two nutrients that um, help your body to produce white blood cells most efficiently is vitamins and makes those white blood cells viable because you can have white blood cells pr being produced, but they're just not very viable. And as a student of live blood analysis and as a live blood analyst myself, I've seen so many samples of live blood and um, so many different vari variations of white blood cells and you will have you can see when a white blood cell is um, in a good state of health and able to function well and you can also detect and see when white blood cells are not so viable and they're not as efficient um, and so again it's not just the presence of white blood cells it's whether they're efficient and effective and whether they're viable or not. So um, you want to make sure that on a regular basis you are taking in foods that contain things like zinc and vitamin C. And that's actually not that difficult because almost all fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables contain vitamin C. Um, you can get zinc in most animal products as well as a lot of nuts and seeds. And again, green leafy vegetables are a good source of zinc as well, as well as mineral rich foods, things like um, bone broth, uh, fish head soup, um, those kind of things, as well as things like um, Irish moss, sea moss, seaweeds, all those types of things. So including those foods in your diet on a daily basis will make sure you're getting enough vitamin C and zinc. And again, m most, almost all vitamins and minerals do not work in isolation. No vitamin and mineral is found in isolation in nature. You will not find uh, one food that only has one nutrient in it. Most nutrients are found in a combination, found uh, with other vitamins and minerals that help them work. So for example, iron needs vitamin C for for it to be absorbed um, in the first place. So when people are taking a lot of iron supplements, but they're not taking a lot of vitamin C, they can take those iron supplements, but then their, their um, iron levels don't increase as rapidly as when they start taking vitamin C, which helps their body to actually assimilate it and be able to use it. So um, if you are dehydrated, if your immune, if your digestive system is not that great, then your body is going to struggle to get the nutrients out of most foods. Anyway, if you have low digestive enzyme levels, um, then that's going to be something that's going to prevent your body from being able to get the nutrients out of all the healthy foods that you're eating and then actually get it into your tissues and in your, through your bloodstream so that it can actually start working. So making sure that you are, you are eating well-washed raw foods and fermented foods both of those two things can nourish your body um, and help your digestive system to get the nutrients out of the foods and those raw foods will also have high levels of vitamin c and zinc in them as well so generally eating that's the reason why you're eating healthy to get those two nutrients as far as your immune system is concerned to get those two nutrients and to build and strengthen your body the other thing that you want to ensure that you have a good level of to increase your defenses is friendly bacteria so there's bacteria all over our bodies um there's hundreds of thousands of sorry hundreds of millions of bacteria all over our body in our skin and our eyes and our mouth on our nose Knows absolutely everywhere we have bacteria we don't want to be a germaphobe you can't get rid of all bacteria and we have a brilliant synergistic relationship with bacteria they help us we help them but we have um, a group of bacteria which we consider to be friendly so they actually benefit our body and then we have a group of bacteria, uh, families of bacteria that are considered to be unhealthy unfriendly sorry so it's not necessarily healthy or unhealthy it's more friendly and unfriendly now your dead digestive tract 
is where is the place that houses the vast majority of the bacteria in your body and you want to make sure that you have a balance of friendly and unfriendly bacteria in your bowel so because the unfriendly the friendly bacteria help keep the unfriendly bacteria in check so again we do not want to wipe out all bacteria that is not the goal of natural health at all it is about creating a synergistic balance in our body so making sure that we are consuming foods that contain friendly bacteria or we're taking friendly bacteria supplements on a regular basis is beneficial to our health because they the the common um ratio is that we in the natural health world we would say that between 60 and 80 percent of your immune system is found in your gut which in the form of that friendly bacteria and traditionally our diet would contain a lot of foods that were fermented um, and that had been cultured in some way because we didn't have regular refrigeration techniques that could keep and preserve our food so we developed and we learned how to ferment food and culture food which would mean that it would stay um, in a state where, that it was edible for longer but it would also in that process creates friendly bacteria um, that would help benefit us so in the one of the african tribes there were some scientists that studied them at some point and they found that they were eating foods that had such high cholesterol levels in them and they couldn't understand why this i think it was a mass mass size they couldn't understand why the mass size were eating so much cholesterol high cholesterol food but their cholesterol levels were were absolutely brilliant as as far as cholesterol levels are concerned um they couldn't understand why they weren't suffering with the symptoms of high cholesterol even though they were eating such high cholesterol foods and they finally after going down a few um wrong turns in their research they realized it was the cultured milk that they were drinking um that was actually helping to keep their cholesterol levels high even though they were eating a lot of cholesterol and it was those friendly bacteria that was found in the milk that was supporting their body's ability to digest the food so efficiently that it didn't raise their cholesterol level. So, um, you know, all cultures have got some form of fermented food, whether it's sauerkraut in Europe, whether it's kimchi in China, whether it's the cultured milks that we had in Africa, we all had some type of cultured food but now those foods have been almost entirely eliminated from our diet and most of the cultured food like sauerkraut that is available has been processed in a way that's actually gotten rid of most of the friendly bacteria and it's in a jar and it's on the shelves in the supermarket as opposed to where it is probably a bit better off which is in the fridges in some cases so including more foods that have the friendly bacteria in your diet is going to be useful so again things like um kefir that you can make on your own and i would recommend water kefir as opposed to um the uh milk versions of kefir and then things like and you can get you can get kefir made from coconut milk or almond milk in a lot of supermarkets at the moment kombucha is a fermented drink if you can make your own sauerkraut and sauerkraut is literally chopped up um cabbage with salt on it that's literally those are the two main ingredients and there are so many youtube tutorials on that teach you how to make it and you can put a spoonful of that with each of your meals and that will add a nice probiotic boost to your meals which will also help improve your immune system and then friendly bacteria in your gut are or they they feed on and they are kept viable by they are fed on because remember they're little organisms as well um and it's useful to provide provide them with a food source and a food source for probiotics is called prebiotics um and prebiotic foods are things like onions raw onions garlic bananas um apples asparagus artichokes jerusalem artichokes those types of things so they have a fiber in them that our bodies can't benefit from very much but they are a brilliant food source for the prebiotics so that's why it's um useful to make sure that even though even so when people are taking um probiotic supplements that are just probiotics it's useful for them to make sure that they're eating the prebiotic foods and thankfully a lot of prebiotic probiotic supplements are now coming with a source of prebiotics as well so that the two are coming in a nice package so my favorite um probiotic at the moment which is one that i have in my health store at the naturally you coach.com forward slash shop is a liquid supplement called raw biotics and i love it because it is easily absorbed because it comes in a liquid um in a liquid format <laughs> um and it also comes with a, a, a combination of digestive supporting herbs as well so that's one that i absolutely love and we have it every single morning 
The second thing that you want, so that's how you can improve your defenses. The next thing that you want to do is to reduce your exposure to things that your immune system has to deal with. So this is where hygiene comes in place. So making sure you're washing your hands um, on a regular basis, obviously day, daily bathing. And I know that like, <laughs> I know that it sounds a bit obvious to say that, but there are still some people that don't consider that 100% a necessity. So, um, and there's a difference between running out of time because you're a busy mum or something like that and just thinking, ah, I just won't bother today. Hygiene is still important. Making sure you're washing the, the dead skin cells that your body is producing on a daily basis, washing off the bacteria and the, again, the pathogens that will end up on your skin off your body on a daily basis is still very important. Um, Things like cleaning under your fingernails, cleaning your nose, your ears, um, all of those things where, you know, places that are warm and moist where bacteria can grow and flourish, keeping those areas of your body clean as much as possible are also important. Um, and then also you can use things that are antibacterial and antiviral on your skincare products. So using certain essential oils, and we'll speak about some of those in a moment, um, on your body, in your laundry, those types of things. Now, again, you're, you're, you don't want to annihilate all bacteria in your environment because um, the bacteria that live on your floor, on your skin, um, in your nose, in your ears, there are ecosystems. They are, you know, living, dynamic um, organizations of these living organisms and they are you know, they, they have a function. You don't want to just wipe them all out, but you do want to make sure that you don't have an overabundance or an overgrowth of the unfriendly ones. Um, so you keep them in check by doing things that get rid of them. And that's what daily hygiene is there for. So you don't want to become like a, uh, what they would call a clean freak or someone that's a germaphobe. We want to just understand that it's important for us to live in harmony. The unfriendly ones do exist, but they're not going to harm us as well, as long as we are keeping the friendly bacteria in our body at at optimal levels we're having enough vitamin c and zinc to keep our white blood cells our defenses up um all of those things are important and we're obviously washing off and getting rid of the bacteria and the, the sorry the pathogens that could um cause us problems um and then obviously reducing contact with people who are unwell um is a, you know a kind of common sense way of making sure our immune system doesn't have more to deal with than it needs to so again there's people who um, are really resilient they can be the you know a member you know one person in a family of four or five everyone else gets sick and they never get sick and again it's not because their immune system is not functioning and it's completely suppressed it's because their immune system has um, recognized the pathogen that everybody else has but their immune system has dealt with it and got rid of it before it's manifested into symptoms so um but yeah if you know that you're not in that way or you just want to be precautious obviously reducing your contact with people who are unwell is is useful at this time unless you really need to you're a caregiver etc and then if you are a caregiver then obviously you keep your protective um your personal protective equipment around you and you make sure you wash off after you've had contact with them the third thing you want to do is avoid things that can suppress your immune function and feed the pathogens so again if the what i normally say to my clients is that when the environment in your your internal environment becomes conducive to the growth of the unfriendly bacteria then they overgrow and what we want to do is keep the internal environment more conducive to the growth and the development of the friendly bacteria as opposed to the unfriendly bacteria so the main things that can either suppress the immune system um, which is reduce the the viability of your white blood cells reduce your white blood cells ability to actually do their work or that can feed the pathogens are things like sugar processed sugar not fruit sugars but processed sugars dairy dehydration not having enough water in your system lack of prebiotics that can feed those probiotics in your diet and malnutrition generally so that goes back to the first step of building your defenses using a healthy diet it, using raw food, using hydration, those types of things. And then the last thing is to suppress the pathogens. So this is killing off the, the pathogens, the viruses, the bacteria, or when it comes to viruses, you're talking about reducing the life cycle of a virus. Um, so you want to take things like, again, probiotics that can help to, these are things that can either, again, so these are either things that can suppress the um the pathogens or actually completely kill them so taking apple cider vinegar with water 
every single morning, taking vitamin C, taking things. Uh, there's a product called Diatomaceous Earth, which is brilliant at attacking pathogens in your body. There's herbs like pud orc tea, quassia chips, or Jamaican dogwoods, which is oh, very strong <laughs> um things like olive leaf oregano um all of those types of things are very useful at they're either antibacterial or they're antiviral and then you've got um, essential oils like cinnamon and thyme oregano peppermint that you can either use topically so you can add them to your skin creams if you get the very high quality ones from doTERRA and you get some professional advice on how to do so there are some essential oils that you can take internally but again i wouldn't do that until unless you are working with someone who's a specialist in um, aromatherapy oil so you know the best quality ones to take um, because some of them if they're not high enough quality they'll be mixed with other things that are not as good for you to take internally but you can certainly um, put most of these into a skin cream and put them onto your skin or put them mix them into your soaps if, as long as it's a plain soap because again if you if you have a soap that already has essential oils in it and you add more essential oils it can throw off the balance and make them a bit too strong so again if there's a plain soap liquid soap that you have you can add some essential oils to that you can put it in your bath um, or the bath water of your children and all of these recommendations are, rec are useful for your children as well if you have a family um, and again, so you have things like tea tree oil, lavender oil, um, clove oil, which is brilliant for things like um, dental health and the bacteria that can grow in your mouth because your mouth is one of the um, most unhygienic parts of your body because we're taking in so much bacteria from the air on a regular basis, the food that stays in our mouth. Um, you know, between us brushing our teeth that can stay there and ferment, the sugars that can ferment, all of those wonderful things, the things that get caught between our teeth. Our mouth is an amazing place. Um, so yeah, using clove oil, even things like coconut oil, which is antibacterial, antiviral, um, you can swish, there's a, a process called coconut oil pulling, where you literally get a tablespoon of coconut oil and put it in your mouth and then swish it around, literally like that you move it around your mouth it doesn't even have to be melted because if i get the heart if the coconut oil is hard when i use it then i'll just chew it until it melts it because it'll melt quickly in your mouth anyway and then when it becomes a liquid you swish it around your mouth for 15 minutes and because the body of viruses and the body of some bacteria is made of fat like attracts like so the fat of the coconut oil pulls is attracted to the fats of the bodies of the pathogens in your mouth and it pulls it into um, and combines with the coconut oil and then it pulls it from all the areas of your mouth your tongue under your tongue the roof of your mouth between your teeth swish 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 and then if you put a drop of clove oil onto the coconut oil before you put it in your mouth you get that added antibacterial um, impact and then you spit that liquid out into a bin so it doesn't clog your clog your drains or your toilets you spit it into a bin and then you brush your teeth and it's a brilliant way of drawing toxins out of your body it's called coconut oil pulling and again there's lots of tutorials on how to do that online so this has been how to um, boost your immune system naturally just to recap those steps again so the first thing you want to do is increase your defenses so that's your external defenses your personal protective equipment um, and as well as um, your internal defenses so increasing your white blood cell production and making sure those white blood cells are viable the next thing you want to do is reduce your exposure to pathogens um, organisms that can cause disease through making sure your um, exercising hygiene and reducing your exposure to people or things that are infected that can infect you the third thing you want to do is to avoid things that suppress your immune system or um, feed the pathogens and the last thing you want to do is work on eliminating those pathogens either by killing them or reducing their viral cycle so my name's been leah sam and the naturally you coach thank you for joining me today again i'd i'd love it if you could come over to my website the naturally and join the mailing list if you are watching this on facebook then most of these videos will be staying up on facebook and you'll just be able to come to my page and check them out um or you can find them on my youtube channel normally a day or two after they have been published here live or on uh, 
um, my blog on my website, thenaturallyyoucoach.com. So again, if you want to find out more about um, the work that I do, the books that I've written, the products that I sell, you can find them all at thenaturallyyoucoach.com forward slash shop. And if you want to find out more about working with me on helping your boost your health naturally, eating for health, thinking for happiness, living in harmony, you can find out information about how to do so on my website at thenaturallyyoucoach.com forward slash coaching and joining the mailing list will mean that you will find out about all the wonderful things that I have going on that can help you to eat for health, think for happiness and live in harmony first and you are most likely to get discounts on products and programs um, and events before anybody else does. Thank you again so much for joining me today on this live. I'm going to be going over to Instagram now and I will be back with you on Monday and Wednesday evenings at 9.30 as long as technology doesn't thwart me like it did before because Instagram kept on crashing um, and I had to abort a live last week so hopefully that won't happen again this week but take care thank you so much for joining me um, take care and stay healthy